Let's take a moment and we'll check out the dual camera input on your Pioneer Nex in-dash receiver. Even though your particular in-dash receiver may have buttons on the side or across the bottom like this one, the on-screen operation in this demonstration is identical for the following Pioneer Nex models. AVH1330 Nex AVH2330 Nex Please note, in this video I'll be using the optional NDBC8 backup camera from Pioneer. There are a couple of different ways that we can view the camera here on your Pioneer uh, Nex in-dash receiver. First way is we can just switch the camera on. So let's go to the home screen and we'll open the AV window here. And here's the camera view, but you can see camera view is grayed out. I can't get to it, so we'll need to fix that. So we're going to close the uh, window here and go to our settings. And under settings, let's go to the toolbox, and we're going to come down to camera settings right here. So under camera settings, here's the backup camera input, and you can see that the backup camera input is switched off. So let's switch that on. When we switch that on, uh, here's your camera polarity. Now this is for the installation. When you install the camera, it has to be told by the car if the vehicle is in reverse or not in reverse. And you can do that by either, either a positive or a negative input. Now in this case, I'm gonna use a positive input and when the um, reverse gear signal wire is activated on the head unit, that will open the camera window and we'll see what the camera sees. So in this case, I'm gonna use camera polarity as battery, but it could be ground depending on your installation. So I'm gonna hit the X now, and we'll go out to the home screen. And here's our AV window, and we will activate the camera view. So here you can see the camera is live uh, and it is switched on. Now there's a couple of things going on on the camera screen. The first is the timer up here. If I touch the timer button, I, that takes you out to the active source. In this case, the active source is the AM FM radio. We can change radio station presets. Uh, we can uh, you know, do whatever you want to on the source. Change the source, do whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. Now, if I stop touching the screen for about five seconds or so, you'll see that our camera view comes back. Here's the camera view back, just like we said, because we touched the timer. Uh, if you want to make the camera view go away, remember we switched it on in the uh, home menu. If you want to make the camera view go away, touch the X. Now you're back to the home screen and the camera view won't come back until you activate it. Now the second way that you can activate the camera is to put the vehicle in reverse. And here I will simulate putting the vehicle in reverse. Now the vehicle is in reverse right now and when that happens the reverse camera, the backup camera activates and you can see what's going on live with the backup camera. Now if you take the vehicle out of reverse it will switch the camera off but also if I want I can hit the X up here. Now the camera is, or the vehicle is still in reverse even though I've shut the camera off. And if I take the vehicle out of reverse now, there's no change to the screen because I chose to close the camera window. Let's put the vehicle in reverse again. Now you can see that the camera comes right back up and if I take the vehicle out of reverse, the camera automatically goes away. Let's take a look at the parking assist guidelines now. Uh, let's put the vehicle in reverse. Okay, so now the vehicle is in reverse, but I don't see any parking assist guidelines up on the screen. We want to see those. Uh, so I'm going to take the vehicle out of reverse, and we want to go to the settings, and we want the camera settings, and here is our parking assist guide. You can see that that's switched off. I want the parking assist guides on the screen, so we'll switch those on. And here's my parking assist guide adjust, but that's grayed out. So we need to engage the parking brake. When I engage the parking brake, here's our parking assist guide adjust. Now here the lines come up on the screen and you can touch any of these lines to drag them around on the screen. It's really simple to adjust them. I'm going to touch this line and drag it down to here and we'll touch this node and drag it in narrower here and narrower here. Make these ones a little wider and we're going to put this green line a little closer to the vehicle and put this red line a little further away, right about there. One simple way to adjust the parking assist lines on your next head unit is to use the parking lines in a big parking lot. In this drawing, you see an overhead view of a parking stall. 
Now drive your car into the parking stall and then right through the parking stall so that your vehicle is in a parking stall and you have an empty parking stall directly behind you. Now, with the vehicle in park, bring up the Parking Assist Line Adjust screen on your next head unit. Put the red line on the parking stall's vertical line that is nearest to the back of your vehicle. Put the yellow lines on each of the parking stall horizontal lines. And put the green line at the far end of the parking stall. The idea here is that when you put your vehicle in reverse, you'll see the parking assist lines appear on the backup camera screen and the lines will represent the size and shape of a parking stall. This is a known size and shape behind your vehicle and it gives you a point of reference for backing up and parking your vehicle. This isn't a perfect solution for everyone, but it's a great place to start and make adjustments to suit your particular needs. When you're done making your adjustments here, you can hit the X to escape. And now we'll put the vehicle in reverse. And you can see our parking assist lines uh, or have appeared. Now, if you use a camera that has its own parking assist lines, you can make these parking assist lines go away very easily. Uh, just go back into the settings here. Here's your camera settings and make the uh, parking assist guide adjust there or parking assist guide. Switch it off and that way you can use the lines that are being generated by the camera rather than the lines that are being generated by the AVHX receiver. So uh, when you're done making your adjustments to the camera, you can hit the X to escape. Now let's check out the second camera input. So for the second camera input, we're going to use the AV input, but assign it instead of as an AV source, we're going to assign it as a camera input. So we're going to go to the gears and under the toolbox here, we're going to come down to the input output settings and under the input output settings, we want the AV input and let's open this window. So under the AV input, we have three different choices. We have we can have the thing switched off. We can choose to have the AV input be a source. And if we use it as a source, that means that we'll have audio and video input. And when you choose that AV input, you're going to listen to music from that AV input as well as the video source. Uh, but I just want to set it up as a camera. So when I choose camera, I can still listen to any other music source that I want to, but I can have a camera input as well. So under AV input, I'm going to choose camera and we'll go back up. Now let's go to our camera settings. And under camera settings, we have to make sure our backup camera input is switched on. And the camera polarity is exactly the same as if we have one camera in the system. This is for the dedicated backup camera when we put the vehicle in reverse. The, uh, the vehicle needs to tell the in-dash receiver that, that the vehicle is in reverse and that will open the window so we can see the camera automatically. The same thing is, uh, applies to the parking assist guide. This is only for the uh, the rear camera. The backup camera is the parking assist guide. The second camera uh, does not have that projected on it. So uh, when we're done with that, let's hit the X. Now let's go to our source screen. We can go to uh, the camera view and switch it on. Now we've se selected two cameras now. So we have a one, two switch down here. This is camera number one. And if I touch the button right here, I get camera number two. Touch the button again, and we go back to camera number one. Let's go over to camera number two. You see that we have a timer here that we can use, uh, and we can the timer here works exactly the same way as it does on camera number one. It takes you to the source, and if you stop touching the source for a few seconds, you go back to uh, camera number two. If we want to close out of the camera view, we can just hit the X. Now that we have two cameras in the system, let's put the vehicle in reverse. There, we've put the vehicle in reverse and you can see that we have the backup camera on screen. There is no way to switch between camera one and camera two, uh, but I can close the uh, camera right there and I can choose my, my other camera right now. So even though I have the vehicle in reverse, if I close out of the camera view and I can choose camera number one or camera number two, and this is while the vehicle is in reverse, I can choose camera number two if I want to. Let's check out the picture adjustment when we have a camera in the system. 
Uh, so we're going to go to the gears here and we want the toolbox and let's scroll down until we find uh, picture adjustment but you can see picture adjustment is grayed out so we'll need to engage the parking brake. Once we engage the parking brake we can get to picture adjustment and under picture adjustment we have rear view camera, we have the second camera, and we have the source. So we'll go to the second camera and we can make adjustments here We'll go back up. We can go to the rear view camera and we can make adjustments here. And when you're done making your adjustments to your picture, you can hit the X to escape.